get started. So hi, everyone. We're team four. And thank you for attending our case study presentation. So my name is Rafaela, and these are my teammates, Celeste, Yoshika, and Sophia. And I also see our mentor, Amy, is here. So we're here to present our mobile app solution called MealMate. And let's get started. So just some quick context about the UX design challenge. As you know, um, it's a six week long design challenge hosted by the nonprofit Iterate UX. And it was made to give a community of UX designers the chance to work within small teams to address a challenge prompt. So our chosen tools for this challenge, um, we use a, a mix of several online tools. So first of all, Figma was used as the collaborative design platform along with FigJam, which is our brainstorming platform and uh, also used for ideation. Discord, our main communication tool with each other, the challenge hosts, and uh, our mentor, Amy. And Otter AI used to record meeting minutes in real time. Google Suite used to um, hold and organize our project deliverables for each week. And lastly, we have Maze, which was uh, a way we can facilitate our usability testing. So now to our challenge prompt. Out of the five possible prompts, we chose to focus on the health and fitness industry. And our prompt is to develop a mobile app that gamifies healthy recipes and meal planning to support users in maintaining a balanced diet. So now I'll just pass it off to Yoshika. Thank you. So now let's talk about the research and discovery phase. During this period, we, did, we conducted survey interviews competitive uh, research and usability testing. So first, let's discuss the survey. In our initial research to get a quantitative data, we conducted a survey using Google Forms. This survey was designed to be short and easy to complete, taking approximately five to 10 minutes to encourage as many users many users as possible to complete. The survey comprised uh, three main sections. The first section collected demographic information such as age and gender. The second section focused on users' meal and recipe management habits. The third section consisted of questions related to gamification. And we were able to collect data from 60, uh, 26 respondents through this survey. From the survey, we learned five key take notes. Users prefer video over text or images while, uh, when viewing recipes. A majority of users spend one hour or less on cooking each day. And Users use the app to find a new recipes, but struggle to find time to cook due to busy work schedule and impacting their motivation to cook. And users expressed uh, interest in gamification as a way to challenge themselves with new recipes and dietary habits. Next, to gather uh, qualitative data, we conducted user, uh, user interviews. These interviews lasted approximately 20 minutes each and focused on gathering insights and opinions about meal planning and dietary habits, gamification in general, and gamification in meal planning apps. In total, we were able to recruit eight participants for these interviews. So they, this one, um, this is the key takeaways from the interview. Um, first one, the key to meal planning are time and customization and nutrition detail. Second one, gamification in general app can use us motivated, like for example, Duolingo or something like that. And gamification in meal planning could be useful to discipline users. Then next, um, let's talk about competitive research. Um, we conducted the research to discover the necessary information for meal planning, understanding the goal of users who 
use planning apps and determine what motivates users to consistently log directly information into an app. We selected and examined five meal planning apps and five diet and weight loss focused app to identify their features. As a result, we found that nine features were common among these apps. So we have summarized our findings based on these features. And we learned that current meal planning and healthy eating apps, mar uh, apps market uh, themselves as simple recipe finders that match your diet goals and preferences. And uh, competitors do not currently leverage gamification. So that's a big space, big chance for me, for us um, to install the gamification concept in the meal planning app. So finally, let's discuss usability testing. In this test, we created a prototype based on screenshot from the Eat This Much app, which we found to be the most user-friendly and aligned with our project goal during competitive research. We break the test using um, maze. Users were asked to perform tasks, including, uh, including logging in and searching for a recipe and creating a meal plan. And we collected the, the feedback and impressions. As a result, we gained four key notes, key uh, takeaways. And in some sections, users need to set more detailed food, uh, detailed food preferences like allergy or food type or something like that. And users need it as explanation for certain terms. And users can lose their way easily because of the burden that not that doesn't not stand out and. Users also can be confused by unclear level and icons like favorite and save. Uh, thank you. And now we're going to go to define section. So using the various techniques, we synthesized the gathered information from our research and uncovered themes. Next slide, please. So after gathering all data from the interviews, our group did affinity mapping by putting comments from the users in sticky notes using FigJam and grouping similar comments together during our meetings. And the key findings were most users said meal planning is time consuming and difficult to remain disciplined. And for meal planning and healthy eating apps, users expect a diversity of recipes, detailed information about meal, including calories, nutrients and ingredients, and customization for different meal types, including portion size and diet. And in terms of the gamification, users responded that visual cues that show progress are motivating factors, but they would also like to see practical and redeemable rewards. Uh, in terms of user goals, users wanted to get used to prepare healthy meals for themselves by using the application. And users also suggested having a character that they can grow in the app related to meal planning and recipes. Then our design team had a meeting and thought about how, how might we? So how might we help young people transition from having someone prepare their meals to confidently planning and cooking meals themselves? How might we strike the balance between the daily habit and a tedious chore when it comes to logging in meals regularly? And how might we present different types of meals and have users navigate through it and choose which meal information is relevant to their current goals. And next, our problem statement was, our team intended to design an app that provides quick, healthy, and easy to cook meal recommendations that poses a solution to various challenges faced by users. And these challenges encompass time constraints and struggle to maintain dietary discipline. Uh, so therefore, our persona represents young adults in their 20s and 30s. And the first persona, Judy, represents a young professional working mom who also has to take care of her family with time constraints and lack of everyday recipe ideas. 
And the second persona, Wade, represents a single family who just moved out alone and doesn't have much cooking experience, but he's trying to cook healthy meals and learn how to take care of himself better. And in terms of the project scope, the first week was for gathering research data. And based on the research data we got, the second week was for analyzing all the data we got from the research. And our team decided on which main features we want to have for our application. And third week, our team sketched some of the ideas, created user flow for the application, started building low fidelity mockups for main features. And in the last two weeks, we finalized our user flow, worked on the high fidelity prototype. And our final prototype was designed using Figma, so the application does not fully function. However, the purpose of this prototype was to show the flow of the application with main features when users actually use the app so developers can have a better understanding of our application. Uh, considering the gathered research data, we narrowed down our app's main features. And the three main features include gamification with avatar and challenges, categorization of recipes, and being able to share their own meals within their community. So by providing a platform that users with specific dietary goals can thoroughly navigate through while providing features such as gamification elements, young adults can feel motivated and accomplished to prepare their own healthy meals. And for the challenge, it, challenge project research, it had to be done in about a week. So it was hard to get participants who had prior experience with healthy meal planning or recipe applications specifically. And also because of the limited time for the project, we weren't able to add all the features that we discussed during the meeting. However, based on the user data we have, our team narrowed down the scope into three main features and the potential users for healthy meal planning and recipe application wanted according to research. And just to kick off the ID and prototype phase, we'd like to first talk about our design system and uh, branding. So first, um, our, starting off with our visual design choices, we have our app name called Mealmate, and it blends the two focuses of meal planning and staying motivated with your digital companion. So we chose this name to convey friendliness and accessibility while having the, an easy to remember brand name. And now um, we chose to create these pet avatars. So our main differentiator when it comes to other healthy eating apps was the addition of these cute character customization elements. We were inspired by the point-based cosmetic upgrades found in mobile games. So these veggie colored animal avatars, once you collect points, you can dress them up with a cute food themed clothing and accessories. Now our color palette, um, we tested several color combinations and we found that the combination of orange and green conveyed healthy eating themes well. And the reason we chose this was due to its brightness and vibrancy and balance with the green color. Also, they represent some colors of vegetables such as carrots and leafy greens. And to make this color easy to read and user friendly within the small screen, app, we also tested for accessibility using the ABLE plugin in Figma, and we chose which ones showed um, good contrast against text color and background color. Now for our typography choices, we used a readable sans serif, which was SF Pro for the main um, sign-in pages and hero pages, and Inter for the content. So these two typefaces, they're clear and easy to read for small screens and they are legible even at the smallest size, which we use was 14 pixels. Now our grid system, we used uh, we opted to use the six column grid format with four pix pixel margins on the side, or four pixel margins and 20 pixel gutter. This ensured that the elements were aligned and centered, whether they're individual cards or the pop-up models in the middle. And for our components, we created these UI components that considered our color options, style guidelines, and a design system based on Flamingo UI from Figma in mind. And breaking down each element into the reusable components was really helpful in keeping the consistency across the pages. 
any changes made to one element quickly reflected in every instance. So now I'll pass it off to Celeste to talk about user flows in our prototype. Hello, everyone. I'm Celeste. Um, this is our user flow. And uh, uh, according to the result of our re uh, research, so we found out we can, uh, we can create three main features. So it brings that into the whole user flow. We connect that those features together and help to bring the uh, fantastic experience for users. So main pr pr uh, proportion are based on the recipe uh, features and others like pet, pet area, and we create some gamification to help to uh, create our features. So now let's take a look on our prototype. Okay, so this is uh, the landing page then you can see that we showed up our main features. And what, so now let's sign up. So once the users sign up, they can go to our onboarding page, which is they need to insert some information so that we can generate their personal homepage. So once they finish, this is our homepage. So let's take a look at our main feature, the recipe. So we have different categories and uh, and now let's take a look how to make the recipe. So there's the ingredient list. Once they finish all that, they can take a look by video or text and step-by-step -step break down those steps and help users to easily get the idea how to make this dish. Um, okay, so once they finish, they can go to share their meals. So that connect to our community features so they can just like post up uh, their photos and also their recipe and to show in the com community uh, features and then that that's their main main community page so let's go back to home page so the next important feature is our pet you can try uh, to do some feeds and you can definitely try to have some game and earn the credits points and shop for them. So use that point, you can buy things and to decorate on your pet. So isn't it very fun? So, and then we can have some challenges. So that's the way you earn your points for your pet. So let's take a look. So once you step by step uh, finish all, then there's the pop up window so you earn something, and then that's our pet area. So let's go back to home page again. So we could co cooperate with our B two B business with some supermarkets and to show some coupons to help users to get some uh, good good food cheaper, and also. Also that um, the other things also connect back to our challenge. So this is our home page. Okay, let's finish our prototype. Thanks, let's go back uh, to Rafaela. Yeah, so in terms of our next steps, um, if given additional time for this challenge, we'd like to pursue further user testing to um, highlight and um, see our potential areas of friction within our current app prototype. And additionally, we'd like to use or propose features that were based on user research, such as our shopping list and digital pantry, which we could use to um, enlighten the app further. And that is all that we have. Thank you so much for attending our presentation today. Perfect time. I was going to remind you two minutes left, but you ended perfectly. Awesome. I like your presentation. Pauline, do you want to share some feedback now? Um, you want me to start it right now? Yeah. Or sure. do it in your way. It's all yours. Okay. So great job. Uh, very detailed. A lot of information. A lot of um, thought to bring into the, the app itself. Um. So overall look and feel, I think you, you did really good job. 
uh, in designing the application. There are some minor things I think you can improve uh, in the process, but also in the in, in showing um, the concept. So um, at the very beginning, when you started out, um, you go into the second, like first and second slides, you already started to talk a little bit more about the design challenge, which is good. you got the idea, the prompt, but I want to know a little bit more about your choice of this um, topics, a little bit background about this product. Um, like here, you tell me about to develop this application, health uh, recipe, but more, a little bit more about this choice about the background, about what you are going to do. What is the initial concept with it? That will be a little bit better. It's not like it's, uh, you have to do it, but I think that will be bring in a little bit about the background. Is it healthy uh, recipe and also uh, helping the, uh, the diet? So what is this application, the background about it? And also uh, the next thing you're talking a little, go straight to the uh, research already. So that's why in the in the prompt, the, the question and the research, I think you should have some overview of what you are going to do for your project, for this challenge. And go into, sorry. Somebody asking question? Nope. Oh no, okay. Nope. So the next step is you show a little bit about the survey. So the survey, when I look at it, uh, you tell me there is like four question, uh, a six question for the demographic. That's fine. Ten question, then four questions. That twenty question for a survey. A little bit lengthy. Uh, I hope you have divided into a different stage instead of of doing all that long uh, survey. Uh, for to complete a survey for ten minutes, a little bit long. Um. Uh, but if you got the result, uh, I think it's fine. Uh, but I will shorten it into less. Um, sometimes people think, oh, but I need so many questions to, to get the data I want. I understand that, but that is also a test for a researcher to using limited question, still getting the things you want so that the, there are more people will willing to uh, take the, the survey because it doesn't take so much time. Uh, and then um, also in this, you talk a little bit about, uh, afterwards you talk a little bit about the result, but I also want to know is with this survey, what kind of things you want to achieve? What is the goal of getting this survey done? So what do you want to achieve? Finding out what? Finding out the recipe, what kind of things, something about it, not only the result, but the, the goal you set it when you start designing this survey. And then the next one will be for the interview. The interview, I think uh, the question, I think, I think it's great. A little bit long, but that's fine because sometimes interview, we are not going to answer all the question anyway. So you will answer as much as you can. But I want to know is who did you who did you interview? I know you got eight uh, user interview, but who are they? When I say who are they, it's not individual, but who is this group of people you are interviewing? What is their demographic? What is their background? Because that is what is it? Is it your target audience? Because I didn't even at this moment. Who are you interview is kind of maybe a potential users or existing uh, or they are existing um, competitor application users. At least I know some some of them uh, will be uh, good to know why you choose this group of people to test uh, or not testing, but interview to get information from there. And um, yeah, I think um, the next one uh, about the insights, the finding, I think it's great. Uh, the key factors of all that, if this is your target audience, all this is very valuable. The, the, info, uh, the information, the takeaway you have, 
The only thing is, is that what what is that group of people you interview? I really want to know that because this is what you're going to base on your 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 this group of people and build your feature. So I think that will be good to at least know a little bit about the the one who who you interview. And then um the competitor analysis um is great. You see there is a lot of competitor out there. And I think uh, anytime when I do any um uh building or designing an app, the first thing I'll go is finding the competitor and who especially who is I will also pinpoint who is the biggest or the most direct competitor. Uh, because there's a few of it here, but who is the main one? I think sometimes you have direct, you have indirect competitor. Sometimes is even the feature, they are kind of very similar to yours, your idea. So which one is your most? And then when you compare your, your, your analysis, sometimes you don't need to compare so many. Instead, you can pinpoint maybe the two direct competitor. Uh, maybe there is more, uh, like I, I noticed there, there is, um, you're comparing with five right now. I think it's fine, uh, but it will be good to know who is your main, main director, uh, main or direct competitor. Um, when you present it, um, uh, some of the presentation, uh, when I look at the, the information, you add on to uh, the, some data with your presentation. I think that's great because sometimes I don't like, I don't like to just knowing, okay, that is some of the information, but when you talk about it, uh, it's much more um, interesting to just seeing the information, but also some background, how you do it or why you do it. And um, another question is uh, for the infinity, uh, the infinity mapping. Um, you go for go through all this. That's great. But when you go into the how my we question, you have three. So when I think of like, oh, that's this three. Which one are you? <laughs> which one are you solving? <laughs> so it's kind of like there. There's a. There, each one of them, there's a slightly difference with, with the re result. So uh, I try to, maybe I miss it, you, you, you mentioned it, but which, which one is, uh, is you're going to focus on with the how by we question? Who is your main problem with it? Uh, sometimes if you have more how by we question, sometimes you lose focus on what you really need to, 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 uh, to build in that sense. Uh, I'm not really sure, is it all free? You are looking at all free, how might we question? Or choosing, afterwards you're choosing one. But for me, I want to maybe more focus on maybe building everything together and find one, how might we question instead of free? It's a little bit, for me, it's a little bit confusing. Which one are you are you looking for right now? Um, uh, I think the design wise, I think it's great. Uh, the The logo, the the overall look and layout of it, I think is good. Um, it's cute also. Um, the, the only thing uh, is when you, when you talk a little bit about your persona, um, um, yeah, the persona, um, Judy, when you talk about Judy and then the start, like she is uh, the married marketing manager, uh, age is like 33 or something. So when you choose the choose the pet uh, avatar, the style, is this the style for that age group or the, that target audience? Um, I, I don't know. You, have, you, you did the interview and you built the persona. So the style, is it uh, fit in to that category? I think, uh, I think it can be, but I think you need to explain a little bit more about the, the style you're choosing for um, uh, the overall look, especially the avatar, because you're going to later on, one of the feature is you, uh, the gamification. Uh, will this married uh, 33 years old persona going to 
earn the gamification and buy some decoration for the pet uh, for their pet. So that is the things you may want to explain a little bit more so that I will see that, oh, this fit into the persona, the, the users, and also the style you choose. And I think, uh, otherwise, I think uh, the flow, uh, I think it's great. Um, but when you present the, the user flow chart, because of the, the flow is quite a lot of things in it, it may even show it a little bit. This is how we, the structure of the site. And then you go in to, since you are focused on free feature, so maybe it's good to have the next few slides, which maybe uh the each of the task flow for that feature to show, and then you can explain a little bit more instead of looking at this and talk about the free feature, because it's a little bit difficult to read. <laughs> My eyesight is oh where is it? <laughs> but instead maybe you can, and each side is enlarged a little bit so I can know oh, this side is about that feature and this part is about that feature because you are focused on the free in this uh, explaining this user flow. Uh, and same as the prototype, I think the prototype you did quite well, but when you go in here, you keep on talking a lot of things and and the, the um, I think this part you should, you're also talking about the free uh, feature, right? So it might be good to have prototype the first feature and then you show it the first part of it because we stay in this in this um screen and look at the how you play how you um uh, use this application and then there is quite long and then suddenly I I don't remember which part you are talking about which feature you are talking about so it may be good to go in and then the prototype for this feature, and then you show it how this work, and then the next feature, and then how it works. So each feature have their own screen, so that it's much more easy for, for us to focus. And also if suddenly we don't remember which part we are in, we can easily see the title. And then, oh, this is the part about uh, the gamification, or this is uh, uh, the part for the recipe session. Instead of the whole thing, you you click and keep on clicking and then halfway through on uh, almost the end I kind of lost uh, okay I know where is it but this part is it gamification or is it the recipe part so I think that uh I think that's it for 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 the for the um thing for for the uh feedback so hopefully they help this help you to maybe build a more um uh focus um case studies awesome thank you so much you're welcome okay thank you so much for the presentation i will move it on to team six whenever you're ready please take over the clock will start counting once you start talking Hello everyone, we are here today to present a disability parking app called Park Always to cater to the parking requirements of physically challenged users. We are team six and we named us Empower UX. It is a team of four thriving UX UI designers, Madhya, Mithali, Tanya, and myself, Inder. For our project, we engaged in collaborative efforts and use various tools. We will be discussing three phases in detail in our presentation. We, Empower UX, want to share a pressing social issue about accessibility needs in parking. We were given five prompts to choose from. As a team, we instantly agreed to work on this topic as we firmly believe that disability is seen as a stigma, not only by disabled people, but also by non-disabled people. To understand this topic, we did some online research. Based on our research, we first understood the definition of disability and later gathered information as to how disability is playing a significant role in the American economy. One in four adults in USA has some type of disability as shown in the figure. 
After understanding the core concepts of disability, as, as a group, we decided to focus both on visible and invisible disabilities, inclining more towards travel-limiting disabilities. As shown in the figure, travel-limiting disabilities increases with age. The next step in initial research was to define a target audience. To address this concern, we decided to target both drivers and passengers with some kind of disability and thus defined a primary and secondary audience. Once a target audience was defined, we, state, we started collaborating on phase one, that is research and discovery. We went ahead with competitive analysis and user interviews. For competitive analysis, we used a brainstorming technique and expert guidance from a mentor, Pamela. Soon we identified two of our primary competitors and four of our secondary competitors. We then did research on tertiary competition in the market targeting disabled population. Next, we con conducted four user interviews, two interviews with disabled drivers and two with disabled passengers. Satko uses a prosthetic leg, while Melody has low vision in one eye, which makes it hard for her to navigate in crowded places. While Jason has some kind of physical disability, Animalo's lower body is paralyzed due to spinal cord injury. Interview results were significant. 100% of our participants said they experienced problems finding accessible parking in their communities. One of the most challenging issues related to accessible parking is the prevalent use of disability pay cards. 75% of our participants raised this concern. To understand their travel pattern, we asked our participants about the places which they often visit. 75% of our respondents travel to meet their day-to-day -day errands, such as grocery and medical appointments. On further analyzing the interviews, we listed some key pain points, such as misuse of parking spots, lack of disability awareness, difficulty navigating to dis disabled parking spots, and so on. These pain points will be covered in detail in upcoming slides by Tanya Verma. Thank you, Inder. Now, as we advance, we grasp the concept of significance of a value proposition. To construct a value proposition, we utilize the business model canvas and the value proposition canvas. We did this task because it helps its potential customers in comprehending why they should choose our business over competitors. Through the insights gained from both the canvases, we are certain that these key benefits such as peace of mind, real-time availability updates, offering a tailored parking experience, end of search frustrations, form the core of our value proposition, which eventually helped us in refining our value proposition statement. That is, our app guarantees a stress-free parking experience for both drivers and passengers. Drivers can relax knowing they'll find a parking spot while passengers are assured of being dropped off at a reserved location. Moving on to our next phase, that's defined phase, where we did the problem statement and how might we. We needed to first gain a comprehensive understanding of the problems and its impacts. Hence, based on our user interviews, we first listed the key problems our users are facing as difficulty finding disabled parking spots, lack of real-time information on availability, lack of enforcement and awareness, and many more. These problems impacted our users in a profound manner, leading to frustrations, anxiety, uncertainty, potential delays and inconvenience, which eventually helped our team in defining problem statement based on insights gained from our researches, user interviews, and an iterative questioning approach, the five Ws. This exercise helped us in articulating our problem statement, which says, people with disabilities face significant issues finding accessible parking that meets their unique mobility needs. Existing solutions fall short, leading to limited accessibility and frustration for this group. After a clear understanding of the problem statement, considering the issues, we contemplated how might we. How might we create a parking app that comprehensively serves a diverse community of drivers and passengers with disabilities? 
How might we offer them customized benefits and features that specifically target their distinct mobility requirements? And how might we minimize the obstacles, ultimately enhancing, optimizing, and simplifying their parking journey experience? The problem statement and the how might we approach helped us to set our objectives in developing a digital platform, a GPS integrated app to find nearby parkings with live updates on paid, discounted, and free slots, which simplifies their experience by providing real-time updates on gas stations, EV charging, car locator, weather forecast, and much more. Moving ahead, Maitli will take you through the upcoming stages. Thank you, Tanya. I will be talking first about our tasks two and three, which is our persona and our empathy maps. The first persona I want to talk about here is Taylor, who is an independent self-driving individual. He's a 35 year old from the greater Vancouver area. He is career oriented and he navigates life with a wheelchair because of a spinal cord injury. Some of his pain points include limited accessible parking spots near his destination, challenges with traditional payment methods and concerns about the safety and accessibility of his parking spaces. His needs are real-time updates on available parking spots, a voice-guided navigation to his designated spot, and a better seamless payment method. The next persona is Taylor. She's a vibrant explorer. She is a passenger. She's a 28-year-old from California. And despite her congenital mobility impairment, um, she is exploring and always uh, trying to participate in community activities. She resides in an assisted living facility and uh, relies on her caregivers for transportation. Some of, her, some of her pain points are long waiting times for uh, transportation to different appointments, the uncertainty of availability of parking at her different destinations, and the inability to communicate her needs uh, to her drivers. Her needs are a, book, uh, a way to book advanced transportation to her appointments, a reliable uh, and safe transportation, and clear communication with her drivers. From the data we got from our user interviews and on analyzing their personas, we created empathy maps for both Alex and Taylor, where we mapped out what they say, do, think, feel, hear, and see. Next, I'll be talking about our next task, affinity mapping and card sorting. To better understand the different categories under which our users had their pain points, we did an affinity mapping. And as you can see, the different categories are Delays and time waste, awareness, availability and accessibility, misuse, seamless payment, and so on. And the key findings we got from this activity were delays in finding uh, parking spots, lack of awareness of their disabilities and their needs among other people, lack of real-time updates, misuse of accessible parking spots, uh, and poor maintenance of parking spots. Next, to better understand the information architecture and the different features we will be including in our app, we did a card sorting activity with the data that we got from our four participants. And based on all the key data that we gathered from our affinity mapping and card sorting, we filtered different key features that we'll be including in our app, including real-time updates on freed and paid parking spots, amenities at the spot, weather forecast, services such as parking reservations, car locator, and an AI voice assistant, activities such as reservation and parking history and marking favorite locations, and customization of the apps such as light and dark mode, text size, notifications, languages, and so on. Now my teammate Matiha will be going over the design system and the prototype. Thanks a lot, Maitli. At the end of the second week, we had a clear vision and key features set for our final design which set the stage for the third phase ideate and prototype. Prior to creating the fireframes, we ensure a comprehensive grasp of the app's flow, hence we developed a flow chart to gain a thorough understanding of our app's features and functionalities. We then created the lower fidelity wireframes to outline the basic structure and layout of our app interface and continue to iterate our user flows and features. For the design system, we choose Alaya, uh, the main reason to choose this is because it has both light and dark mode, and then we created a mood board. For the color palette, um, the primary, secondary, tertiary colors, we choose the bright colors because these uh, vibrant, vibrant colors can provide good contrast against many backgrounds, making it potentially suitable for users with visually impairments or those who require elements to stand out. We choose JAWS, which is a sans-serif Google form, and is uh, which is designed with accessibility in mind, 
it adhered to web accessibility standards. Uh, the design system Alaya we choose has many components, both for the dark and light mode, which we use to make our app consistent and visually appealing. We, they have a great system and also for the dimensions of the elements. The name Park Always was selected to reflect the app's missions of making parking accessible and convenient for everyone, regardless of their mobility or disability status. We then created some sample logos and we chose this one. We aim for simplicity and cleanliness to effectively communicate our brand's message. Now let's move on to the prototype. I will walk you through it. Um, <clears throat> in the onboarding process, we would uh, like uh, the, the app would ask the user either they are a driver or a passenger, which are our two. <clears throat> Sorry which are uh, our target audiences. If they are a driver, they will be asking about the play card number. And if they are a passenger, it will, they will have to add their disability information. This is important because they, uh, we make sure that accessible parking spots are uh, used fairly. After signing in, the user will go to the home screen. And we wanted to make it simple and clean. Uh, we have few options in the, the nav bar, not so many crowded. Uh, our main feature is our AI voice assistant who assists users by providing spoken guidance for finding accessible parking spots, answering questions or concerns through voice commands, enhancing accessibility and usability for all users. We have a car locator feature which helps users remember where they have parked their vehicle. In the beginning, it's grayed out because there is no location selected right now. We have included a weather information widget. User can quickly check the current weather conditions ensuring they are prepared for their journey. There are two ways to search for a parking spot, uh, either by zone ID or with the search address. So now let's take our primary uh, persona, Alex, uh, who wants to find an accessible parking spot as he is getting late for his appointment. Um, <clears throat> after searching the destination, he can see the heat map of the real-time available parking spots, both free and paid. He can choose the parking spot what he likes, which is near his destination. And he can also see the amenities that are uh, available at there, like the price, the capacity, distance from the, uh, the destination, the opening hour prices, especially the accessibility. And he can over, uh, over, uh, give a review, which will be helpful for the other users. While searching his destination uh, parking spot, he realized that he has also uh, to fill his gas station gas. So on his route, he can look up for the gas stations and choose which one he wants, and it will be added to his trip. He then can start uh, start his trip, and <coughs> uh, and he can have a turn by turn voice navigation, uh, which is also one of his needs, as Mikey described before. At the end of the trip, uh, he will get a pop up notification of the car locator whether he wants us to uh, remember the spot where he has parked. And there are two ways to access this auto. And if we say yes, so car locators is enabled. And when he came back from his appointment, and if he doesn't remember, he can choose the car uh, locator and get the directions, or either he can uh, use it for get the spot. Let's explore. Let's us explore the services section that we are offering. Um, again, let's take uh, Alex, uh, who is career oriented and likes to stay up to date with the latest technology. He attends different workshops to upgrade his skills. In order to go there, he can use, uh, in order to go there and look for accessible parking spot, he can use the parking reservation feature for a hassle-free option that ensures him that the parking space will be available for him when he reaches there. He then can choose the date, the start time, and the parking time, and also he can see uh, uh, see the, uh, do the payment online, which is also one of his needs also, a seamless payment, and he can see, uh, do the parking reservation. In order to utilize it at the day, uh, he can go to my reservation and he will see it there. Uh, at the destination, he can scan the QR code. Once it is uh, scanned, so it will be invalid now. And then he has also extend parking reservation if he wants to extend it. So he can come and uh, at the end time and pay <laughs> right away. 
Now let's let's talk about our secondary persona, um, uh, Taylor, uh, who is an explorer and very much involved in the community activities and social gatherings. She wants to go to one of our community uh, gatherings. She can either book a solo ride or she can ride with someone who is heading to the similar location. After the search, the location she can uh, she's asked for the co-rider, and she is given uh, options to choose a vehicle, a regular one or assisted vehicle. In her case, she will be using assisted vehicle, and there are the riders over there, so she can uh, choose whichever they want, she wants, and she can pay <clears throat> at the time and confirm her ride, and she then can track her uh, ride. Uh, the key benefits would be like uh, cost sharing to spread the fair community connection. She can meet other people and environmental impact. In the main menu, we have another very important feature, which is really a key, key a main key point for our users, the violation of the parking spot. So our user uh, can report the violation. Uh, they can choose the current location and they uh, um, need to see which kind of violation is it. And uh, then next, they have to uh, upload pictures and submit it, and it will go to the authorities. And then we have uh, the settings, um, different settings also available, text size also, and in display, we have a dark mode. Uh, as uh, we have seen uh, that dark mode is becoming, becoming very uh, like uh, <clears throat> popularity among broad range of users, including those with disabilities, because of the reasons such as reduced eye strains, improved readability, uh, and sensi uh, reduce sensitivity to the light. Uh, to ensure the inclusivity <coughs> and accessibility in our design, we provide the option for our users to switch between dark and light modes. Uh, this way, user can choose the mode that best suits their needs and preference regardless of the disability status. And then mainly, because it's for accessibility, we did the web content accessibility guidelines. Most of our, our thing was uh, on spot. A few things were lacking behind, and we will definitely work on those. Now, Tanya will um, conclude the, the presentation. Thank you, Madiha. We have encountered a lot of challenges during this project. One of the biggest challenges our team faced was collaborating within a limited time frame as the project required intensive work. However, this challenge exposed us to new areas and helped us in understanding and working on our key skills. Some of the lessons learned during our journey was to it's not it was it's all about telling a story you will never get it 100% right being a great communicator is essential showing empathy to the team members as a group we have decided to work further on the next steps as employing a mechanism that temporarily locks your reserve spot to prevent others from taking it collaborating with the government for reserving the spot all across interface weather map on the home page interactive weather map on the home page that would help us fine tune our project we have also provided the reference library for the resources and materials we have used and now as we wrap up this presentation team 6 would like to express their gratitude to the organizers by creating a platform that allowed us to tackle this challenge and emerge as a cohesive and successful team and we also believe that this marks the beginning of our work on lessons learned, feedback received, and the next steps to be taken. Thanks once again. Before moving to our feedback session, please send all the QR code from the chat to access the prototype of our app. We are now open to questions. Great job, guys. Nice time, you know, really well managing. Nice job. Okay, uh, Pauline, take, take it over. Okay. Um, yeah, great job. Um, very detailed. Uh, lots of information. Um, one thing for the presentation, I know is because it's timed. Uh, I know you guys is in a hurry, but you talk really, really fast. Sometimes when you talk fast, when I go to one screen and then you already finish and then, and another thing is I understand for presentation, you want some animation. It's like, oh, flying in and out. Uh, for me, presentation always about the content, not about the animation. For me, the animation is a little bit distracting because when you talk and then I look at it and then when I started to read some of the things, it already flying away. <laughs> so some of the detail I want to go into, I can't see it in the, in the like the slice is going uh, not quite 
one to two as the first page to another, but instead there's the transition time and the transition time itself, I cannot see the detail on that page. So a little bit time consuming for all this animation and I miss quite a few content in the presentation. Um, and because you're also talking a little bit fast. So for me, some part I really interested in, I miss some of the detail. So that is the things about like, I know the timing sometimes if you do presentation, uh, if there is a time limit, don't tailor your, tailor your presentation to um, talk enough, but not rush it because, oh, I have so many content. So I rush it a little bit because if it's rushing a little bit, sometimes I miss something. So you may want to simplify maybe a few slides to make time for the, the, the people who are looking at it or watching it a little bit. Um, let me listen and also think about the content you are presenting. So um, for that, uh, just the overall uh, of, the, of the presentation. Uh, go in a little bit deeper. I like the, I like the logo, the first like here right now, uh, the design um, already out there. Uh, understand that how it's supposed to work, uh, the mapping and everything. And also the logo is very sharp and also meaningful. I like the way you put together the background, uh, the background story, some research behind um, the problem. So when you go first, you're already starting to talk a little bit about um, you collect enough information regarding the accessibility. What, what did accessibility or even disability for you? What did you look at it? This data, I think, make me uh, looking forward for, for the information and also for the, uh, for the problem you are going to face. So I like the way you talk, start talking about the problem, the background, and this part of it is great. Um, in the user interview, when you talk about the user interview, um, you have the you have the yeah you have the user profile, and um, the way you say this part phase one is interview, but the result you go into the next two next two uh, slides, uh, all of them is more about the data you collect from them. I didn't see a lot of like the insight of it. There is like the numbers, average time, um, the chart, uh, the percentage, all that. But how do they feel? What is their what 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 is their feeling? What is their kind of like fact in in a way that what what did they feel about certain things? What is their opinion? Uh, insight you find it when you talk to them. All this number is kind of for me is like uh, uh, it's not enough empathy instead of a little bit for me is oh, okay that's the number the the key pain point uh i'm not saying that it's not good but instead maybe not using the number but instead using a little bit more into the insight you got i think you have that insight when you go into the next uh session uh, about the problem um, define the problem here. For me, this part is more about the insight, about the problem. For 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 me, that is when you do the use user interview. This is kind of the things I want to know. In self numbers, the empathy part. Remember, empathy first, and then define the problem, and then I think the the numbers can validate. The, the 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 problem itself. Uh, I think it's just the lo the 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 information you flow it in in a different way. And uh, yeah, same as the other group, you have three different um how my we question. Uh, it, it may be a requirement for this uh challenge. I don't know. Um. Uh, or is it the new things they you want to have more than one? How my we question? Uh, usually, uh, I usually have one. 
uh, how many we questions so we can focus on the main problem uh, and then we can build on the problem itself. But for this three, um, I think it's good question or like the other group, they all three of them is really good. Uh, the, the, the how many we question, the problem, the things that you are facing. But for me, sometimes it's a little bit distracting. What is the main problem? Is this supposed to be um, served as a diversity community for uh, create the app itself? For the, is it the, the, the problem or the benefit? Or, uh, so there's three things over here. So same as before, maybe you have one very good and solid how my we question. It's much more easier to focus on what is the main problem and what, what kind of things you want to solve with it. The problem may not be creating a parking app, but instead of how to maybe customize the benefit or feature or enhancing to at the same time, enhancing the experience. So it can be easily put together in one very, very focused, uh, how may we question. This is not only for you guys, but also for the other groups. It's like they separate out. Uh, I don't know, is it a new thing or whatever, but usually we only have one, how may we question it instead of like free part of it. Um, uh, the design itself is great, especially I like the way you um, you put together in um, the design system, the look and feel of it. And um, let me see. Yeah, the dark mode is great. Uh, I I really like to see a little bit more like this and the, the screen before because I, I didn't have the chance to see it. So uh, yeah, so for this one, uh, it's great to understand how you come up with your design. But I kind of skip this two, two slides because they're when the, you guys talking, the animation is, the loading time is a little bit like, this one is just come out and then that one is already go into the next slides. So um, yeah, and um, let's see. Um, yeah, the color palette, uh, you do the testing for the co color contrast. That's also very great. Uh, you consider that as, especially as this is a accessibility, um, like design for the disability. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, also when you have the prototype, um, you introduce it for like one part of it. You have the layout with the weather, uh, the weather, the, the degree and all that. Um, when you talk about it, it's very interesting. But when you go into the white, the, 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 this, this mode, the dark mode is fine. But compared to the light mode, it's kind of hidden in the background. Instead of the dark mode is pop up. You can see that that is the that that is the highlight, right? You you can see that there is like a block. You can see it, but when you go into light mode, it's kind of hidden behind the especially the color. It's kind of like hidden, and people may not be seeing it much. So it may wants to pop it up a little bit, similar to the the dark mode because this is a feature you want to talk about. But now here, when I look at it, it's like, oh, when you talk about, where is it? <laughs> Instead of like the other one, it's much easier to, 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 take, uh, to see it. Um, one last thing is about your prototype. You go into the prototype when you started to uh, present it. Um, I like that you kind of present it as for the, uh, user profile, right? It, so you have the user profile and then uh, what they need, what, because different profile, they have different need. And then you want to show it how they use it. I think that is a great idea. The only thing is, I don't know which uh, which uh, user profile you are, you are using right away. Like um, it will be great to have maybe on the side or somehow you have the, the 
the user profile and one or two pain, uh, one or two points about what kind of things they needed to do. And then when you present it, oh, this is what they need, and then click on it. Because why I'm asking this is because uh, if I don't know which uh, user profile you're doing, you are in this profile, in this prototype, I see that you go into the, the book at uh, the uh, booking and then you go up to the, you are not following like, no, the, the, the other one. Yes, go back here. You talk, we talk, uh, you started talking a little bit more about the parking res, uh, reservation. And then after a while, and then you go back to the book arrive. So for looking at this, you come out, it's like, okay, it's go up, down. There is not like a, a, a normal flow of like, oh, when I test it, first one, second one to show the, 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 uh, the structure or the, the, or the feature or the layout. But your way is better for the user for the user profile, but it would be great to know which profile we are talking about, what kind of need they need to use in this uh in, in this uh prototype. I think that will be even better. The idea I think is great. It's just need to know which one which one uh, po uh which profile are you uh talking about? I think uh yeah, that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think this is all we have for today. Great job, guys. Um, make sure you take this feedback back and discuss with the team, make the last adjustment. And yeah, be ready for the 29th event. And thank you guys for coming with us tonight. Thank you so much, Pauline. That was a very nice feedback and insightful comments to, to share. Okay, guys. Um, yeah, good luck and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much for jumping in. Thank you, Pauline. You're welcome. Bye. 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 -bye. Hey, everyone. On behalf of Iter UX, we'd like to thank you so much for watching this week's event. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe. We'll have this every Thursday at 5:30 Pacific time. Join our Discord in the description to find out more.